morning, everybody. It's Valerie Sayer, the owner of Nutrition Connection Balance. And at the request of many people that missed the live inflammation and pain lecture, I decided to record it and I'll get that sent out to you and then I'll put on our website. And please feel free to share it with anyone that could, you know, you know, could help them. And I hope you will learn a lot today. Um, I always like to hear feedback. So that would be great. So I'm Valerie Sayer. If you don't know me, I am the owner of Nutrition Connection Balance. I'm one of the two clinicians. I have done uh, two natural bodybuilding shows, three full marathons, and many other small races. I'm a mom of four boys and one girl. I'm an entrepreneur that believes in empowering people and with their health as well as with their wealth. I am an author of two books, one on nutrition and another of one of my passions, Hardest Read, I call Soul Soaring. You can go to Amazon.com to get that or at our office. And that just came out and was released by a publisher in Chicago, April 7th. And then I'm a Reiki master for almost 20 years now, hard to believe. So it's pretty awesome. So if you don't know what a registered dietitian is, I think it's important because everybody thinks they're a nutrition expert. And just think about your profession. You can't get good at what you're doing if you don't specialize and focus. And so a registered dietitian, you have to have at least four to five years of school. My degree is from Florida State in food and nutrition science. And then I did a medical internship at the Cleveland Clinic in Ohio. I um, am licensed, of course, in the state of Florida. And then I have an advanced medical exercise specialty. I work with a lot of athletes and very athletic myself, as well as all of our adult children. And then I had a registered pharmacy technician license all the way through last year. I was a director of a company pharmacy, and I just decided with moving my practice to Florida, I was not going to keep that up. I do not prescribe pharmaceuticals. I work with a team or a doctor or a specialist if we feel like a medication is really necessary or the best path for you. But I base things on functional testing, integrative testing, individualizing, and things that have health effects, not side effects when possible. As I said, I'm an author of two books. I have multiple audio videos and uh, recorded CDs. And I owned my private practice since 2005. And as I said before that, I ran a compounding pharmacy and I worked with lots of registered pharmacists and learned a lot internationally from an herbologist as well as um, a homeopath doctor. So I really love empowering people. So our topics today is why inflammation matters, what causes inflammation, how to test and assess that properly, and then what are the things that you can do about it that could actually get to the bottom line of what's causing it, measuring it, reducing it, and then hopefully feeling better whether you decide to do pharmaceuticals or surgery or not. Um, as I mentioned here, this picture uh, is an old picture of my son, Dylan, our son, Dylan, and Dylan was running down the hallway and hurt his hip and actually fractured his hip growth plate. And they told him he would be out for six months to a year. He'd probably have trouble growing and on and on and on. That is not how I think or believe I had him cover his ears. And there he is uh, taller than um, John and, uh, and today he's just about six, four and a half or six, five. So pretty exciting, uh, that when we look at healing, he was better in three months, had the cast off and was back to playing tennis and did not have obviously any growth issues. So when you do things properly to help the body heal internally, it's amazing what can happen. So this is a slide I'd love to show because it was in Time Magazine a long time ago. And if you can't see it, I think it was 2004. So it's not new information that we know that the number one cause of inflammation, the, the number one cause of all disease is actually inflammation. And it's systemic. That means you can't feel it. It's inside. There are ways to measure it that I'm going to show you. Two incredibly important ways that every single person should measure, especially preventatively or if they're especially having pain, inflammation, an autoimmune condition. And it is what starts every one of the top 10 diseases. It doesn't matter if we're talking about heart attack or cardiovascular wellness or Alzheimer's or cancer or diabetes. So what is inflammation? Inflammation is the immune system and it gets triggered by something and it signals that we're hurt. Okay. So most people know about when you get a cut and it clots and you put a bandaid on it and then there's, you know, that type of thing, or there's other things that trigger a bigger systemic problem like a stroke. We also have injuries. There's neuron and pain changes. Prostaglandins get triggered, which are particular hormones that cause inflammation. Histamine gets released and causes inflammation, whether it's a very small fracture in your toe or whether it's something very large and you hurt your knee or your back or neck. Then there's the overactive immune system, autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis that obviously are very inflammatory. 
So what are some of the causes of systemic inflammation? Aging increases the risk of all disease. We'll go through these thoroughly in this lecture. One, uh, number one that you can control is an omega index. You want your ideal level to be 10 to 12 in the highest preventative level. Remember when you look at labs, the, the issue is, is that they don't define them for prevention. It's just detection. So when I look at numbers, any of my patients, I want you in the highest preventative level based on the studies and what can decrease your risk the most of all diseases. So you want an omega index of 10 to 12, and you have to take essential fatty acids. The issue is we want you to take the right ones. You can then also look at your acid level, and that particular acid level turns on or off cancer and autoimmune disease and other inflammatory issues. And I'm amazed how people have Lyme's, lupus, Crohn's disease, no one has ever done this. It's absolutely wrong. So you want to take control and get some of these things done. If you have a higher, you have a higher risk of inflammatory conditions when you have a diagnosis of hypertension or metabolic syndrome or blood pressure, if you don't know what that is, diabetes, arthritis, if you're on prescription medications, there's genetic risk, there's post-trauma, like even a surgery, an accident, or an injury. And then if you have body fat higher than 25% if you're a male and above 32% if you're a woman, body fat makes systemic inflammation. A bigger waist. If you don't know your body fat, you can always get it at my office if you're a patient of mine or want to stop by. But the other thing is you measure your waist circumference. If you're a female, you want to be under 35. And if you're a male, you want to be under 40. So those are very important. High again, body fat or waist circumference increases your risk in systemic inflammation. Of course, toxins and poisons, whether we're talking metal, glyphosate, or herbicides and pesticides, stress, which we've all had in the last multiple years due to COVID, whether you're pro-vaccine, not for vaccine, it doesn't matter. Whether we're talking about vaccines or just COVID, we had worldwide stress at extremely high level for everybody. So when we look at the aging, it's called, I call it inflammaging. And obesity aging drastically increases chronic low-grade inflammation, and especially is increased as your metabolic issues get ramped up, such as, again, high blood pressure or diabetes or high insulin. So we also know that oxidative stress and inflammation is what turns on inflammatory conditions in the brain, like Alzheimer's. So between inflammatory cytokines and Alzheimer's and systemic inflammation, it also can cause other brain conditions. And it's amazing when you look at the risk of Alzheimer's, how it has to do with poor diet, fake fats, as well as essential fatty acids. So we do have answers how to reduce your risk. So get on board if you're concerned about that. Any type of word or condition that has the word itis is inflammatory, whether it's localized or systemic. So here you've got a healthy finger joint, then you've got osteoarthritis, then you've got rheumatoid arthritis. So again, itis means there's systemic inflammation and you want to be doing the omega index and the highly sensitive CRP when you have those conditions. So it can start helping your system, no matter what you're doing, start to repair or hopefully turn it off. There's degenerative illnesses like degenerative discs in the back, macular degeneration of the eyes, autoimmune conditions, MS, lupus, Crohn's, anything with the word itis, rheumatoid arthritis, colitis, diverticulitis, and cancer. So we certainly are all concerned about this. And it isn't just about weight, it's what's going on biochemically internally. Okay. So some of the things that you want to avoid, and the reason we go over these is so you can see how it happens where people think they're doing the right thing, but they don't realize what's been contributing to their systemic inflammation because they are suffering with pain or a condition that might be able to be taken care of through lifestyle and over the counter. That's where I come in. So number one is you wanna avoid polypharmacy. One of the first things I learned when I went to pharmaceutical school is do not let the patient ever read the real insert or try not to take more than three prescription medications. Three or more, we don't know the interactions anymore. Now we're at the end of life or hospice, that's a different issue. We're looking at quality and that's pretty much it. So I always tell people, go to drugs.com, look up the side effects, look at the interactions, look at the contraindications. And again, is there a lifestyle change or over the counter that you can do that has less risk or no risk and could affect that condition so that you can be as healthy as you want? One of the examples I give is Lipitor, a statin medication for lowering cholesterol. There's multiple things in my office I can give you whether you have trouble with statins or not or want to avoid it. But statin is a total of 338 drugs have known interactions. 43 are categorized as major, and then it goes on from there. 
Lipitor and statins also typically about one in three have horrible pain, very change, big changes in energy level and fatigue and liver enzymes and liver functioning. So again, we want to look at ways to keep our body healthy, whether we use lifestyle and or over the counter. But again, it's based on testing and quality and individualization. It's not just going to a drugstore and getting something. So one of the other things that are a huge contributor to um, systemic inflammation that people do to try to control pain and inflammation is non-steroid anti-inflammatories, whether they're in the cream form or whether they're things like uh, Advil or Motrin, aspirin. They increase the cardiovascular risk, GI problems and bleeding, kidney problems, skin and allergic reactions and breathing all double the risk of heart failure. And since if you're over 50 or as we get older, we're already at risk for heart disease just because of aging and postmenopause and aging in men, we wanna be very careful about this. So we wanna do things differently. Even the US Food and Drug Administration, if you like to stay very, very detailed and only very organized, huge groups, they even said that these drugs should be taken 10 days or less. So that's it. Celebrex is another one. Celebrex in March 17, 2005, a study was stopped and they recommended not to use Celebrex because it increased cardiovascular disease. When you take 200 milligrams twice a day, it doubles the risk. And that was in the New England Journal of Medicine. This is not new information. And now I'm seeing everybody use it again. What happens is typically 10, 20 years later, the drug companies come back out and the doctors forget. And they just, this is what they give people. And I totally disagree. If you look at just the conservative, again, conservative facts about Celebrex, risk of serious cardiovascular and gastrointestinal events, that these non-sterile and anti-inflammatory drugs increase the risk of cardiovascular thrombotic events, myo cardial infarction stroke, which can be fatal. And again, we can go on and on. So again, I'm very concerned about this. And as you get older, again, it causes so many problems with ulcers as well as GI bleeding and risks of serious GI events. A lot of times people are on pain and anxiety, anti-anxiety medications at the same time. And it can really cause rep respiratory distress where it's hard to breathe. It can change liver enzymes, stomach problems and bleeding and ulcers. The other concern is if there's women, a lot of women are on both and women in particular above 60s, they make a mistake and they take their pain medication too close to their anti-anxiety or antidepressant. And that is a $42 billion business. And this is not new information, the risks. Even the Journal of Clinical Psychiatry showed 1999. So again, I try to show these things that they're not new. It's that we're not aware of them and we're not taking control of our health. So remember this, I'm gonna come back to this Afterwards, where we first of all talk about do pain drugs actually work? 38% of people with lower back pain get pain met on their first medical visit. And over one year, the dose is usually doubled. And even after one year, there's only 6% average improvement in relief. So again, it tells us it does not work very well, not to mention the risks. So I'm gonna come back to that. And there's a reason I want you to think about that as we go. So then we wanna talk about, okay, what are the things? We know that what can cause a lot of it. And of course, outside of an accident and different things, but now we talk about what can we do about it? And whether you believe it or not, the reason I became a registered dietitian is the only thing you're gonna do your entire life is eat. So when we look at nutrigenomics, again, old definition, nothing new. Or if you wanna even look at a newer word, epigenetics, how we change the risk and the expression of genes for disease. It shows how different foods interact with specific genes to modify the risk of common chronic diseases. Nutrigenomics also seeks to identify the bioactive molecules in the diet that affects health by altering the expression of genes. So there are lots of things we can do to help reduce pain and inflammation and disease risk. So, so one, start with foods. Eat more anti-inflammatory foods, turmeric, curcumin. If you don't like those, we have an encapsule form. Ginger, shiitake mushrooms, and some other forms. Again, only again if you don't have allergies. Green tea without caffeine. Green tea also has a huge metabolic component as long as you have it without caffeine. We have a new supplement called Burn that you get the green tea component without the caffeine that showed six to 7% body fat loss. So again, there's a lot of things we can do. Papaya, blueberries, broccoli, spinach, pineapple, all have certain enzymes that are particularly helpful or phytonutrients that are anti-inflammatory. Enemies, 
of pain and inflammation with diet, things you want to avoid, refined sugars, trans fatty acids, a low omega index, processed potatoes, especially potato chips and French fries. When they're heat at a high heat, it releases something called acrylamide, which can cause not only cancer, but increased pain and inflammation. Milk and dairy, whether you believe it or not, it has carbs and protein, but they are absolutely inflammatory. Uh, conditions. And uh, most people have a lot of trouble with lactose. Whey is the only one that probably 50 to 60% of people can do well if they're doing a powder. And it also has very large trauma and repairing benefits. Pesticides, of course, on different fruits and vegetables, you want to buy organic, look up the dirty dozen and try to buy organic. Those are all the ones I grew myself in the tower garden. And then of course, the clean 15 that you don't have to buy organic that you can get that are very good in whole foods. Dried fruits because of sulfur dioxide, gluten, toxins, and toxic people. Negativity affects our well-being. So you want to be around people that support you, that say, what can I do for you? Do you need help? Hey, let's go walk together. Let's go make some green smoothies together. Those kind of things. And you really want this beautiful, I love this plate because it really is inspiring to look at how even different colors and the variety of fruits and vegetables, plant foods directly affect different things. If we're talking about anti-inflammatory in this particular lecture, you can see it's the purples and blues and the red. So you wanna eat more. You know, when we make something like today's salad, we had three different kinds of onions, you know, yellow, orange, uh, sorry, yellow, um, purple and white. Or when I buy peppers, I'll buy orange and green one time and red and yellow the next time. Again, mix it up. So you really want to have a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables that are grown on your tower garden or again, organic if it's from the Dirty Dozen or the Clean 15. You can make smoothies. And again, you can grow your own. I have had a, the Flex Tower Garden and I have it in my office, this one over here. And you can also have a cage and bring it outside with tomatoes, peppers, I do mainly lettuces and greens and herbs because we eat a lot of that and we eat a lot of salads like we did at lunch today. And then we have the home that's a smaller base that goes right next to our refrigerator. It also has a baby greens and herb garden at the top. But why do you wanna grow one? I am not a grower. I have no plants in my home. I ask people not to give me plants. They are, again, when you grow the tower garden, 98% less water it takes, 90% less space, 30% more yield, three times faster, safe and nutritious, and the University of Mississippi did studies and showed it was better than organic growing. So again, we want nutrient dense, pesticide, herbicide free and simple and delicious. So absolutely come to our office, see one, and then ask us how you can start growing one. Again, I've had one for 11 years and the other one we've had three and a half years. So they last a long time and you get everything you need to get started. And then you can buy your own seeds as you like. So Juice Plus is one of the items to help you bridge that gap and is the best body insurance that I found because of the research. Number one, you notice that plate and we want a very large amount of fruits and vegetables in different colors. The fruit, vegetable and berry, you wanna take two red, two green, two purple every day. If you hate taking capsules, you can open them, put them in your green smoothie or your complete smoothie we'll talk about, or you can actually have chewable that tastes like gummies. You have to take double the chewables, four, four and four, if you're over 12 or an adult but either is fine. So there's always a way to do it. It is the most researched nutritional product in the world and it takes place of vitamin E, vitamin C and a multivitamin. So I've used it for 21 years as well as all of our kids and with all my clients, patients, friends and family. The essential fatty acids, if you want to have a plant-based is the only plant-based that I've ever used and has an omega index study that we're gonna talk about that actually can increase your essential fatty acids and particularly the DHA that is related more to brain as well as more related to colon cancer risk and inflammatory conditions. They are all vegan. So a lot of times when people have trouble with burping and a lot of other things, or they want to stay more plant-based, it's a great one to do. You want to start with two at least. If we test you, then you might need three or four, or if you're over 50, absolutely start with two is better than nothing, but you're going to have to at least start with four. So your omega index is better. And again, just come to our office. We'll get that ordered for you, or I can give you a few to try. So the reason for the Juice Plus, though, and the essential fatty acids, and it has multiple medical studies. And so number one, you can see it's got multiple studies and a healthy inflammatory response, as well as many other things that are healthy. 46 other peer-reviewed studies, to be honest. Dr. Richard Du Bois was an incredible, he just passed away, incredible infectious disease doctor. He said there's nothing else available any place in the world with or without a prescription that is clinically proven to do what Juice Plus has to do. 
Do not buy things from the grocery store. Do not buy things from the internet. Do not buy things from the TV. They are not a nutrition facts label like the Juice Plus, and they do not have the medical studies. They're only testimonial. In this lecture, we're talking about, about pain and inflammation. There are multiple three studies that show it lowers systemic inflammation. This one in particular from the Molecular uh, Nutrition and Food Research Medical Journal peer-reviewed study showed reduced markers of DNA damage, and DNA damage was correlated to inflammatory markers previously reported. So again, when we talk about those markers, we want those things to go down whether you feel it or not. So how do you assess your body fat? So now, number one, right, we learned... Uh, first, before we talk about body fat and inflammation, that you want to clean up your diet, have more anti-inflammatory foods, avoid the ones that increase inflammation. And I say 80-20, unless you are super sick. 80% fun, 20%. 80% uh, clean, 20% fun. We'll say that backwards. All right. And then when you want to assess inflammation, these are the things that you want to do. You want to make sure if you're female, your body fat's under 32% or more. And if you're male, 25% or under. And again, if you don't want to do your body fat, you can stop by your office, then you could also uh, measure your waist circumference, 35 inches or under, unless you're very petite for a woman and under 40 inches for a male. Then you want to come to our office and get a blood spot test for cardio or highly sensitive CRP. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then you want to get the omega index. And then if you're very concerned, we want to make sure you look at your cortisol. When people have high cortisol, it causes inflammation. And the problem with that, it also causes anxiety, also causes fatigue, also causes high blood sugar, also causes inflammation, also causes lower immune system, also causes sleep disruption. I could go on and on. And again, very, very important to test the adrenals and especially the cortisol. But if you want to start somewhere for sure, it's absolutely the CRP, highly sensitive CRP and the omega. So let me give you an example why you wanna test your highly sensitive CRP and before there's a problem. Whether you have pain and inflammation now or preventatively, you want to test this. It's a finger stick, you can do it in your home, it goes right into the mail and then we get the result and then I assess it and then tell you what to do specifically for your levels based on your risk and your number. But when the highly sensitive CRP is high, there is a direct correlation for stroke. That includes all cardiovascular disease and autoimmune as well as other items. So anyone that wants to stay healthy needs to measure their highly sensitive CRP to hopefully reduce or stop their risk of inflammatory conditions, stroke, heart disease, and other things that we're worried about. Here's an example of the highly sensitive CRP. There is a scale. So this particular person has a 1.3. The goal is always 0 0.8 or less. And you can see that 0 0.8, 1 to 1 is a mild risk. 1 to 2 is medium. 2 to 3 is high. And 3 or higher is means there is definitely some major things going on, whether you recently had a surgery, high inflammation, or you don't have any of those things. We're very concerned about a disease that's very close and coming. And that's what we want to turn off. The test costs $99 right now in our office. That does include the test lab result and the assessment and what to do, that advice. Second most important test, or together, quite frankly, it's not one or the other, it's absolutely both, is the omega index. I have said for my entire career that essential fatty acids are essential because our body doesn't make them. Everyone needs them. There is such more poor diets, so much more stress and inflammatory conditions. And then of course with aging that you need more and more. If you do it right and measure, then we can find the right one for you and you can have this change. You want your omega index to be 10 to 12%. It reduces prostaglandins that cause that inflammation and of course reduces that acid. You can see this person has acid way up here. We just recently had someone off the chart and of course, she was already diagnosed with a condition at age 19. Not surprising. When I see this, there's already a condition happening or there is one right around the corner. And most often it is heart, autoimmune, or cancer. So we absolutely want to get this acid level down. I have not knock on wood, and I've had over 20,000 patients just since the pharmacy and private practice. I was a clinician for many, many years before then. I have never not been able to get this down doesn't mean you won't have a condition, but it means the symptoms, hopefully medications or risk are lowered or even turned off or they stay in remission. So very important. And then we want that six to three ratio to be three to one or less. So these are all the things that we do that lower inflammation. And this omega index actually has four pages of assessments 
and multiple markers that tell me how your body is working with certain fats, as well as what you need to do specifically. So that test in particular is $225. That includes the test result, all the report, as well as clinically what to do and handouts and a video. So here's two examples. We talked about the Juice Plus Omega. Here's another one called Pro EPA. EPA is one of the ones that directly affect especially autoimmune as well as inflammatory conditions that are very high or high risk, whether you're talking about Lyme's or rheumatoid arthritis or MS. We have had patients with MS that have been in a wheelchair for years that are not in a wheelchair. But I'm going to tell you, they don't just do essential fatty acids. They do the juice plus capsules. They reduce their inflammatory foods. We test them. And usually within a few years, there is a remarkable difference, anywhere from 25 to 90% difference in how they feel and with their symptoms. So please consider, you know, if you have someone that you love and can, you know, are worried about, have them call our office, get the Omega Index and the highly sensitive CRP. Start there. So we know how to start helping them. Doesn't matter if they're doing medication or other treatments, they don't interfere. So what other ways that you can do to get healthy essential fatty acids are these. The top foods are wild salmon, canned sardines, albacore and tuna, shrimp, and then different plant sources like nuts and seeds, almonds, avocados, and lentils. However, the reason I like to put this up here because people say, well, I wanna eat my way there. You'd have to have 16 ounces of salmon a day the average person that I test needs 1,000 to 5,000 milligrams of EPA and DHA, those omega-3s. They can't get enough. But if you eat more of these foods and you're testing and we're getting inflammation down, the better chance we have of helping get that omega index up and your inflammatory level down. And if you don't like the foods or you have a seafood or nut allergy, you just can't do it. It's absolutely impossible. So it's just to help. It's not instead of because of the amount that our bodies need. So remember that particular thing where I said only 6% improvement in pain when someone is on a pain medication for back. They showed that there's less pain in 75 days in non-surgical back and neck conditions if they got their essential fatty acids, EPA and DHA, 1,200 to 3,000. We do know the mechanism. It modulates inflammation. It helps the brain cell communication with trauma and nervous system. That's why it helps with things like lupus and MS. And it also helps with concussions, anxiety, and Alzheimer's and brain conditions. So again, alternative to anti-inflammatory and non-steroid non anti-inflammatory drugs is again, more EPA. Look at this study, 2006. They show that in 250 patients, when they saw a neurosurgeon, they had in 75 days overall reported 60% less pain and they had to stop and they were able to stop using their non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications. And again, essential fatty acids are needed for everything else anyway. So it's health benefits plus some symptom. And of course it doesn't help over one. You don't see hundred percent, but the good news is everyone needs essential fatty acids anyways that are helpful for pain, for inflammation, for prevention, for heart disease, for hormone pathways. And I can go on and on. Our brain, our mental health, so extremely important. If you've had a trauma, an injury or that type of thing, then you wanna get more protein. Whey protein as well as plant proteins and, but you've got to get 40 to 60 grams more than you've been eating anywhere from 10 days to six months, depending on how big the injury is. So you've got to do that. Number one, if you want to heal faster, or if you have open heart surgery, or you have a hip replacement, or you've got an injury, you know, and you're an athlete and trying to repair, you want to increase antioxidants. That's where the juice plus comes in. And again, those anti-inflammatory foods, those whole plant foods, different colors, whether we're talking about an orange sweet potato or a beautiful uh, organic um, red strawberry uh, or a granny apple that's organic. And then visualization and relaxation to picture yourself healing. For example, where we know exactly how this works is with acute ligament injuries, as well as surgeries, there's a protein deficiency during healing and it can affect inflammation, stays longer, fibroblastic types of issues and remodeling. So we know as soon as possible after injury, as well as protein affects 26 neurotransmitters. So again, when I am dealing with people with MS, lupus, Crohn's, their gut and how it transmits to their brain and their neurotransmitters 
in that transition with our neurons are not working properly. That's why essential fatty acids as well as protein are absolutely necessary, but it's gotta be quality. And again, people usually pick carbs and unfortunately not good foods or the bad proteins. We're talking about 40 to 60 more grams of protein. So we know that it absolutely helps with healing. We're not gonna go over the slide, but you know, just again, how it absolutely is important. We also know there's different kinds and how it works. The protein spares muscle, it won't elevate blood sugar. It has most studies been done on whey or really high quality plant proteins. And again, you want 20 to 28 grams of lean protein per serving. Here's one at our office that we have whey fit and lean that is actually a functional food that has seven to eight grams of fiber. And again, 21 grams of protein and it's only about 285 per serving. So absolutely supports body composition, muscle recovery, as well as people that have autoimmune conditions. Complete, if someone needs to say gluten and dairy free, which a lot of people do, I'd say about 50% of all the people I work with, the complete is my favorite. I actually use complete with actually the perform that I'll show you next because I need very high protein diet just due to my genetics. And of course, as I get older and I strength train and work out every day. So number one, we want to have a low glycemic index. It's gluten and dairy free. It's got very, very high level of nutrients. It's actually seven grams of fiber and it tastes delicious. There's a wonderful ice cream recipe, a pudding recipe, energy bites, pudding pops I can give you in if you don't like smoothies. I actually do the complete with a scoop of Perform twice a day, sometimes three times a day if I do two, more than two workouts. It's 25 grams of plant protein. It actually has some other nutrients that are very good for energy and people that are high energy, a personality or overachievers or high exercisers. And again, it's dairy gluten-free and again, it's tested uh, by the NSF, which means it's tested for contaminants, herbicides, pesticides. So when we eat plant foods, we do not want to buy a regular shake. I'm always amazed when people are buying things from Walmart and other places, the glyphosate and the contaminants are high as well as bacteria risk. It is a no. I don't care. A lot of times, even those cost more. It's that you want quality and you want research and you want the NSF standard that tests for those things after it's been manufactured. And when it is plant-based, it will always have contaminants if you don't have that certification. I don't care if it starts organic, it went to a truck and it went to a processing plant. So you've got to have things that are tested on plant powders afterwards, okay? So I hope I'm motivating you, but let's just talk about a few other things because this is typically what I hear. I've tried everything. And then I really said, are you teachable? I didn't say that in the beginning of this lecture, but are you teachable and are you willing to change? Even if you're willing to just start with the testing or taking one or two things. But here's again, some things as an example that we know that have you, do you know your omega level and is it 10 to 12%? Do you know your highly sensitive CRP level? And is it 0.8 or less? Do you take curcumin? It's a, a very high anti-inflammatory whether you eat it or take it, if you do or don't. And again, you don't want to just take a regular supplement. There's only one on the market that's used in all the studies. We have it in our office, curcumin phytosome. There's something called Inflamasport that I have multiple anti-inflammatories. There's one called SPM Active that I use in conjunction with high acid, autoimmune, Crohn's, celiac, Lyme's, fibromyalgia, MS, post-cancer that helps the omegas and inflammation work better and has enormous amount of studies for pain and inflammation. And it's one gel a day. If I have very high level CRP, we'll do two a day for three to six months, but then rarely do I have to do more than that. If you're having joint issues, just in an elbow or a knee, you could just try joint one to two a day for one to two bottles. You'll know if it makes a difference and it does not have side effects. Or there's three kinds of collagen, but I wanna warn you, collagen only works if you have enough protein. So there's a collagen building formula. That's a scoop you can add to your complete smoothie or your whey protein. That's five grams. There's a tissue collagen uh, capsule that you could take one twice a day. And again, that affects tissues, lean tissues, bone, as well as injury and healing. And then joint nutrition. Again, if you're having achy joints or as you get older or have a lot of over joint use for from a variety of reasons, it can actually help with pain about 70% of the time. And you'll know one bottle if it makes a difference. So again, very right there are just some things that to do immediately that could change the pain receptors, inflammation, as well as assess what the difference is besides how you feel. 
this is a Reiki class that I had and I just love to show this because this was a Reiki master class and we have, I can't really see it as well in this picture, but there's some orbs. And Reiki is a hands-on healing, a hands-on healing that was founded in Japan. The reason I chose that healing modality, it has multiple medical studies in pain and inflammation from the Cleveland Clinic onto pain management centers and, and in hospice. So Reiki is something that someone can learn from someone or get a Reiki treatment. I recommend at least get Reiki one if you've got pain because then you're able to do Reiki on yourself or a spouse or a pet that is having pain and inflammation. Even if you're holding their hand or you're a clinician or a nurse, just by having Reiki, even if you're not doing it, they show it can change the healing capacity. So right there is another item most people have never heard of. What about our truth and belief systems? Do you believe that you can heal? Do you believe the only way to heal is to get surgery and medication? Then that probably will be what will happen. Um, you know, those have its place, but have you tried everything else first? I just gave you a list before, as well as this list. Biology Belief is one of the best books ever. It is very scientific, but it's an incredible, and I'm gonna give you an example for this with knee surgery, where they talk about how powerful the mind is and what you believe. So believe that you can heal, believe that you want to support your biochemistry system and be around positive people. They show smiling, the up curve and how it affects the brain it makes people feel less pain. Uh, Louise Hay has wonderful books on non-toxic relationships as well as different uh, affirmations you can say that help heal conditions and guided imagery. Bell with Napperstack has incredible guided imagery that shows less blood loss during surgery. So we have all sorts of tools. So we have page one of some oral things. We've got foods, we've got the juice plus, we've got the omega index. We can measure your highly sensitive CRP. We can take some supplements and we can do some energetic work. How about another page? Okay, we'll go to that in a minute. So in the biology belief, I like to use this, this one. Now I'm not saying some people need surgery. There's bone on bone, there's certain injuries you need surgery, but all good surgeons know that there's no placebo effect. That means that what you believe in surgery. This is Dr. Bruce Mosley. What part of the knee surgery gives relief? So they had three groups. They had a group where they did the knee surgery like normal. Then they had a group where they shaved uh, they didn't shave the knee cartilage, that's the actual group. But let's say I thought I was getting surgery and I didn't have surgery, but they still made the same sounds. They actually made an incision. They told me I had surgery, okay? Then they had someone that had half the amount. So that means when someone has surgery, they shave the damaged knee cartilage, they flush out the knee joint, they remove the inflammatory material. And then the people, let's say, pretend like me, they cut my knee, but they did fake surgery. And then they had the same post-operative care, the same PT, they saw the doctor, the oral, sur the uh, physical, the orthopedic surgeon, et cetera. Non-surgery improved better than surgical group. The placebo surgery participants only found out two years later. It's an amazing story as well as how we believe. One of my favorites was in a particular video where they showed a guy an older gentleman, elder, playing basketball with his grandson. And he said, it was great. I had knee surgery two years ago. And then they told him he didn't actually have the surgery. So it's just that he believed he did. So that is how influential our belief and our minds are. So never underestimate the power of your belief system. This was published in 2002, again, old, right over 21 years ago in the New England Journal of Medicine. So there's lots of medical things that people don't know about and choices that they could be doing. Dr. Norm Sheely, credible pain neurosurgeon and energy medicine practitioner and a medical doctor. And he finally started changing his therapy because as a pain surgeon, very few patients were getting better. Their pain was off the chart, especially people with crippling of rheumatoid arthritis where you know, they can't even open their hand. And they found when they did meditation with anger, forgiveness and anger releasing, their joints would open up. So again, there are scientific proof of how powerful our mind is to help. And it doesn't mean it will always help. So please don't ever think that I'm saying there's anything magical, but imagine if you applied all these things. And I can tell you from my patients, I have patients that are 70s and 80s that are better than the average 30 year old out there. So it can be done. And again, more techniques. How about hands-on, functional exercise, hatha yoga, movement, Pilates, Qigong, meditation, Prana breathing changes the nervous system. Incredible research on just breathing and opening up your airways and your lungs and your gut, as well as your rib cage. 
physical therapy, acupuncture, prolotherapy. I had two tears in my left Achilles and they said all I could have was surgery and I was not gonna have surgery. I respond very poorly. It's been two years of weight gain and inflammation that happened after something very minor. So I'm not having surgery. I actually had some PRP injected into my ankle and Achilles twice. Then I did acupuncture massage therapy and I measured my CRP and omega index every other month for two years. And I got it 100% healed, literally. So again, I was willing to do that versus the surgery. Massage, chiropractic care. Again, there's so many things that you can be doing. So I hope that you've been inspired, whether you have MS, lupus, Lyme's, an inflammatory condition, arthritis, that there are things that you can continue to do. You wanna clean up your diet. You want to avoid prescription drugs when possible or try to take it short as possible or the shortest amount or the smallest amount. You wanna test your omega index, get into NCB, call, email. 8850-227-7931 or NCB team at Nutrition Connection Balance. You can also go to nutritionconnectionbalance.com for website for our upcoming lectures, to watch recorded lectures. Take the right supplements from NCB. They're all vetted. In other words, we use them clinically. So if something doesn't work, we know it's not the form, the milligram, the content or how it's manufactured, that it is just not working for you. Or if we don't see your numbers move, then I know to use something else and then get on Juice Plus for goodness sake. So we hope you have learned a lot today. We're very excited to help you with your pain and inflammation. And uh, we wish you all the best. Please pass this on to anyone that you know and care about, and I look forward to talking to you soon. Bye-bye.